How's it going everybody? My name is Thomas Draven, back again for another video, and this is obviously a very different setting than my other videos on my channel. I didn't really feel up to doing a hair video today, so I decided to try something different. So today we're going to be going through my guitars. I've been playing guitar for about six or seven years now, and I've amassed quite a collection, so we're just going to go through those. Um, just because this is something fun that I've always wanted to do, one of these guitar collection videos, and I've always thought that it would be just a fun thing to do on my channel. So that's what we're doing today, and we're just going to jump right into it. Right, so I have a few guitars still in my rack that I'm trying to get rid of. Uh, I'm going off to college in just a couple of months now, so I definitely don't need as many guitars as I have. I probably don't even need as many as I do have, but uh, there are some that come to the top of my mind whenever I think of you know ones that I really don't need. So those are the ones I'm going to get rid of, and those are the ones you're going to see first. Alrighty, so starting us off is this Gibson ES335 style guitar. Um, this is not a real Gibson, of course, because uh, I don't have that kind of money. Definitely not. But uh, I am very much like a DIY kind of person, and I built this one myself. It turned out a little rough around the edges. This is like my first attempt using stain on a guitar, and so in some places it's really uneven. But overall, it's a really cool guitar, and I don't know. I just... Um, Never really found a use for a hollow body or a semi-hollow body. This has like the center block thing. Um, it just doesn't really suit me or my playing style. You know, I'm very sort of rough on it and I like my straps low, but not too low. And I always had an issue with slamming my arm right there. So that was certainly a really uncomfortable thing. So this is one that I'm not gonna keep, but um, paint job, obviously inspired by Tom DeLong of Blink-182. Uh, he had the racing strike on his, and this is just like a single volume knob, and one pickup, the Gibson Dirty Fingers pickup, and then this pickup here is just sort of a placeholder because I didn't have anything else to put in there. So that one's not actually connected, so it's just pickup, volume, and out. And so this is very nice, sort of like Blink-182 style uh, pop punk or sort of pop rock, pop rock or punk rock, and uh, yeah. Cool guitar, just not gonna hang on to it. Next up, we have this very striking black and green guitar. This is a House of Blues branded guitar, though I think it's actually like a Washburn uh, guitar. I think they're the ones who actually make it. And this was a gift from a friend. Uh, it was her brother's old guitar and he wasn't using it anymore, so she thought she would pass it along to me. And of course, you know, went right ahead and modded the ever-living crap out of it. I mean, it used to be three pickups, humbucker, single coil, single coil, just all black, very sort of plain looking. And so I got green gaff tape and taped it all up all around the place. And it became my sort of like uh, B standard drop A guitar because I really am a huge fan of typo negative and they have like the black and green kind of aesthetic for everything that they do. Um, that being said, this is a standard scale instrument, so it doesn't really handle low tunings that well, but uh, I've, I've enjoyed it at the time that I've had it. I just don't necessarily need that many guitars, and this is one that gets like the least amount of playtime, so this is another one that I'm getting rid of. That being said, I do like this pickup combo. It's just two humbuckers. We have this uh, Hot Rails pickup that I think I pulled out of um, some ESP LTD F series, F10, something like that. Um, decent neck pickup, has a pretty decent split coil sound. And then this is a Seymour Duncan parallel access. I don't know if it's the regular or like the hotter output one, but it sounded pretty good for this tuning. I just wish uh, this guitar had a longer scale. So yeah. All right, next we have this very traditional looking Stratocaster. It's just like a Starcaster type a uh, very affordable type instrument with, you know, the humbucker and two single coils, maple neck, black, white pick guard. Again, very traditional aesthetic. This guitar, I think I traded my friend for it. And then I put a new pick guard in it with new pickups. And then I sold the pick guard because somebody wanted the pickups and the pick guard but didn't feel like buying the whole guitar. So I just had one of these basic um, pick guards just sort of laying around 
And so I just decided to throw this on there because it took, you know, 10 minutes to solder the three solder points between the bridge and the ground and whatever. So this is another guitar that's leaving me, but it's actually surprisingly decent for this. So moving right along, those were all the guitars that I'm getting rid of, that I'm not keeping in my collection. Now we're going to be taking a look at the guitars that I primarily use in the studio, certain guitars that are just very either special or expensive that I wouldn't feel comfortable bringing out to band practice or a gig. Um, and so they mostly stay in the studio for recording. So the first studio guitar that we have is this absolutely incredible black Jim Root Signature Jazzmaster by Fender. This guitar is phenomenal. I mean, this is this was the first ever really expensive guitar that I bought with my own money. Um, I think I got this used for about a thousand dollars, but I know they retail for about fifteen hundred, fourteen ninety nine, something like that. Um, so I found one online for this, you know, essentially two thirds of the original price, which was too much of a or too good of a deal to pass up. And I essentially borrowed a thousand dollars from my mom, and I paid her back, of course. Um, and this guitar is absolutely fantastic. I mean, it has uh, locking machine heads, locking Fender machine heads, I believe. Um, the ebony fretboard, maple neck. I believe this is a mahogany body, EMG 60 and 81, single volume, three-way switch. Just simple, simple, simple. But this is just the most like sturdy, reliable, rock solid, and probably one of the best playing instruments I've ever had, much less owned. And it's, it's just all around fantastic. I mean, this thing is so killer to look at, and even more killer to play. Right, so my other main studio guitar for six string standard tuning stuff is this black Squire Fender Starcaster. I don't really know whether these fall under Squire or Fender because they're Starcaster by Fender. And I also know there's like a Starcaster Fender model, which is totally different. It's like a hollow body. It's weird, um, but still a better game than scheme than Ibanez. Not bashing Ibanez, you'll see later. But in any case, uh, this guitar was a gift from a friend, again. Um, it was very similar to the Starcaster that I showed earlier, but it had this, you know, rosewood neck and the painted headstock, and of course, like, the very generic pickups, like the uh, humbucker and single, single. And this is, um, sorry, I found this pickguard on Reverb. It was like 50 bucks. It was a really good deal for like a loaded pickguard that looks absolutely fantastic, this sort of marble black design with the three-way switch, uh, single volume, EMG81 and EMG-S or SA. I'm not really positive, but I can look it up later. And this is very much similar to the Jim Root in the sense that, you know, if you have an EMG81 in the bridge, most of the time you can expect a very similar result. That's just how EMGs work, in my opinion. Uh, but I definitely do like having single coils in the neck just for like clean tones and stuff like that and sort of like uh, just a different sort of flavor with like rhythm playing and while EMG does offer a uh, pickup that you can coil split I am not going to bother spending any more money on buying that new pickup and swapping it in my gym root just to have that single coil function uh, functionality if I can just have this one here and of course this doesn't play as well as the gym root but it does what I need it to do, which was mostly single coil sounds, and then you can just flick it into the 81 for some searing leads or really tight rhythms, and this guitar is absolutely killer. Right, so now we're gonna be moving on to guitars that I would use for like band practice or gigging live if I were doing anything like that currently. Uh, but at the moment, I'm only really doing like recording stuff and I'm working solo for the most part because my last band was an arguable disaster, but that's a story for another day. So these guitars that I'm going to show you now are something that I'm not too precious about, like if they get dinged up and stuff like that, it's not too much of a bother. That being said, I love these things because they're amazing. So first up we have what is actually kind of cheeky, I feel like some people are going to bash this, but uh, I think it's pretty cool, is this black 
jazz master looking thing that is not Fender. I got it off of AliExpress because I'm terrible. I'm sorry, all of you purists and everything like that. Um, I don't condone like blatantly stealing somebody's designs. Um, that being said, there's like so many companies that copy the Stratocaster and the Telecaster and it's, it's just kind of a common practice at this point. I don't think it's particularly anything new, but I really wanted another sort of uh, black jazz master that I could beat up on stage and something that was a bit more unique to me than my Jim Root jazz master. So I looked around and this was the cheapest, most affordable option and it turned out really nice. So in any case, we have the standard sort of matte black body. I mean, it looks very much like the Jim Root uh, jazz master. I don't think it's as big though and it's a bit more rounded in some spots. And um, the paint, of course, isn't perfect. There's like a, some scuffing here uh, that I was there from this, the factory. Uh, I don't really bother with it. I mean, this is a gigging guitar, so if it gets banged up, then it gets banged up. And any imperfections are totally perfectly fine at this point. Um, but in terms of modifications that I did, this is not the stock neck by any stretch of the imagination. The stock neck that came with it was terrible. The frets were like already worn when I got it somehow. I don't know how that works, but they were just really shitty and the nut was terrible and I couldn't dial in a low action for anything. So I saved up a bit more money and got a Warmoth neck, one of their custom shapes. I think this, this is the EVH shape, like the profile. And it feels very robust, I feel like it doesn't really make a lot of sense because I don't play lead, I only really play rhythm, but it's just really nice to have in the hands. It's sort of like a teardrop shape from what I understand, you know, being thicker on the thumb side and then uh, thinner on the um, finger side, whatever you want to call that. And it just feels really nice to sort of dig in and get nice sort of uh, hard chords because I play particularly hard, so I really need to dig in for that. Um, yeah, stock tuners from the factory in China. They're arguably terrible, but I mean, they've held up pretty well so far, so I'm not gonna fault them for anything like that. I mean, they're a pain in the ass to tune, but they hold tune surprisingly well, so I don't actually have to tune it a whole lot. Graftec Tusk Nut, that's either the Tusk or the Tusk, uh, Tusk XL, but uh, that's a huge part of this, because the original nut that came with this guitar was horrible, and this nut has been incredibly helpful in keeping everything stable and everything sounding good. And uh, pickups, we have a bare knuckle juggernaut and aftermath. I wanted something that was kind of similar in the same veins as the uh, 8160 set. And so I messaged the people at bare knuckle and they hooked me up with this. I definitely really like both of these pickups. The uh, juggernaut is uh, Misha Mansour's first bare knuckle pickup. And it's, this pickup sounds great for like rhythms and um, very sort of like plinky clean stuff that I really like. I like the very sort of ambient type of like really big reverbs and delays and chords and stuff like that. So this really works well for that. And then this is just, you know, scorching, blazing hot, really tight, aggressive bridge pickup, which suits my needs perfectly. And yeah, I mean, uh, push, push pot for splitting the neck pickup. I don't need a split bridge pickup, and then just a three-way toggle switch, and that is my Chinese coffee guitar. Moving swiftly along, we have the next guitar, which is this absolutely gorgeous PRS Mark Holcomb signature guitar. Um, I'm a huge periphery fan, if anybody didn't know. Uh, I love their newest albums, Periphery 3 and Periphery 4 especially Periphery 4 because Hail Stan is by far probably the best title for an album ever. But these guys also have just like the most fantastic gear out of any band, like of all the bands that I've listened to over the years, these guys have just like the craziest, most epic gear and I absolutely love that. So this guitar is all stock from the factory because truth be told, it's absolutely perfect the way you get it. Alpha and Omega bridge pickup set. This is the Omega, this is the Alpha, which kind of, I don't know, if you interpret Alpha and Omega the way you're supposed to, it makes it seem a little backwards because they make this one sound like the most important one, but this is the Omega. 
It's all semantics. I'm nitpicking here. This guitar is perfect. Uh, just volume knob, three-way switch, tone pot with a coil split. I don't ever use a tone pot. This is like one of, I think the only, this is the only guitar that I have that has a tone pot on it. I'm pretty certain. But I'm not gonna bother modifying this guitar um, just because it's absolutely fantastic the way it is. I mean, just every single piece of it from the matte finish on the back of the neck to these pickups to, I mean, just everything about it, like the 20 inch radius on the fingerboard. It just plays so fantastically well and there's no reason to do anything to this guitar. That being said, the only thing I will do, and I don't know if this really even counts as a mod, is I'm just going to disconnect the bridge pickup from the push pull because as I said earlier, I don't need split coil sounds for my bridge. It just doesn't suit what I'm going for tonally. And I like having the ability to be like split coil neck and then go into, just flick it right into full on bridge, like full on humbucker bridge, just for like that, you know, very ambient clean sound into like the very tight, aggressive, dirty sound on the bridge. And so just snipping off that wire and taping it up would allow me to do that. But yeah, if, if you're looking for a guitar, in like the like one thousand dollar price range, like I've heard nine hundred one thousand dollar price range, this is the perfect guitar. And if you don't have that kind of money, you can find them used for like really, really, really good money. I mean, I've seen ones go for like six fifty, seven fifty on Reverb, and that's that's theft. That is a criminal act. I wish I had bought this one used, but I wanted to treat myself to something new and unused and totally bright and pretty and never touched by another human being so that's what i got and this is an amazing guitar all right so next we have this very very interesting guitar that i have right here this is i don't even know what to call it this is pretty much essentially a custom build that i did i found this body on reverb for a good price and it looked really cool, but it was like sticker bomb and it just didn't suit me. So I went for essentially the Thomas Draven equivalent to the NW44 from ESP or LTD, the Neil Westfall signature Eclipse, because I really like the look of that guitar and I really like the sort of one pickup configuration. It looked really cool on a single cut body. That being said, I wasn't going to shell out a thousand dollars for it, and I don't really like single cuts. I mean, certainly, I kind of lately have been feeling like I want to get one, but that's kind of uh, another story. Um, but I'm, I've always been very partial to the offset sort of jazz master type guitars. I mean, I have two of them that you've seen already, and I this is a third, and I had a fourth a long, long time ago. but. Um, this is sort of patterned off of that guitar, and so we have the single pickup and single knob with a push-pull. And when I bought this guitar, or the body at least, this pickup was angled like this, sort of in reverse fashion to what you would normally have it. And truthfully, I actually really like what it does for the sound. It definitely really tightens up the low end because the strings, you know, you're more close to the uh, point on the bridge here that meets the strings and that's where the, the sound is like the brightest and the tightest is like right where the uh, Right about where the um, String meets the uh, the saddle and so you get very aggressive very tight sort of attack and It just sounds really fantastic the pickup currently is a Dragonfire quad rails pickup and While I thought that I would like these pickups because they look ridiculous and they look really cool um it's just not really me. It's a bit too saturated in, in its nature and not clear enough. I mean, I like a lot of clarity, especially for what I use this for, which is drop C tuning. Um, so I have a, a Mark Holcomb Omega bridge pickup that I'm going to swap into this. I just need to get around to bringing this to the shop and swapping that out. It's gonna take me probably an afternoon because I'm really bad at wiring, but you know, just push, pull, pot, one volume, the hardware isn't even actually gold, it's chrome, and I just painted over it because I'm a cheapskate and I wasn't gonna pay $40 when I already had gold spray paint for free. So, 
That's this guitar. It's absolutely fantastic. Plays really well and it just looks badass. That's plain and simple. Like this build turned out to be one killer guitar. Right, so next up we have another very polarizing instrument. This is a Harley Benton bass six style guitar. I wanted something to play bass on for recordings, but I'm a guitar player. That's what I'm comfortable with. And I just didn't feel like doing it on bass. And I thought the bass six would give the recordings and the live playing a nice sort of flavor to it. So I picked up one of these and it sounds very cool. I think for what it's worth and the money that I paid for it. Um, actually, I think this would be gift. Yeah. <laughs> well, the price of the instrument, either way, was very, very, you know, very, very reasonable. And it, you get a very high quality instrument for what you pay from Harley Benton. I think they're a really strong brand, really up and coming, and you get a lot of bang for your buck with this brand. That being said, I do want to go ahead and mod this. Um, I might swap out the tuners for something locking and also because these vintage style tuners are not the easiest to drill out. I had to drill out this one in particular because these strings are quite heavy. I believe this is, I don't remember, I think it was a 90 or something like that. Even though I actually want something heavier, I want at least like 100 or 105 on this low string so I can tune it down a little bit. Um, but other than that, you know, uh, very sort of standard like volume and tone and a five-way switch. And these pickups, I want to switch out for some humbuckers. I just need to figure out what I'm going to put in there. I might see what I can rip out of another guitar uh, that I have that I might get rid of and just throw it in here. So I might leave this middle single coil, but these pickups out here definitely need to be some stronger sort of humbuckers. And I think that's going to turn this into one crazy base six uh, mother loving i don't i don't know what to say <laughs> but yeah uh this is a very cool guitar very fun for recording and definitely adds a really epic flavor to uh the music so keeping on with the same theme as the base six we're going to stick with extended range here and this is my ibanez seven string this is an ibanez geo series seven string which is like a very sort of entry store uh entries entry level style of sort of price um, with these instruments. But that being said, with this particular example, you get a lot of bang for your buck. Uh, certainly this, you know, in terms of some features, it struggles, but in terms of other features, I think it actually is pretty strong. So stock tuners, these are just the ones that came on it when I bought it off of Facebook for like 150 bucks, good deal. They hold to me really well and I haven't had any sort of issues with them, so that's totally fine. Nut has been perfectly fine, again, like, no problems to speak of whatsoever. Fingerboard, I believe, is rosewood, and the neck is maple. And this is just a very sort of stable, metal, sort of genty machine. I really like the sort of curved cutout here. It's also very comfortable. And in terms of hardware, these pickups did not come stock on it. These are the DeMarzio Titan pickups. So Jake, uh, Jake Bowen from Periphery, these are his signature pickups and they're absolutely epic. I really like them. Again, I'm a huge Periphery geek, huge into their gear and they sound really great. So I got these on Facebook also for like 80 bucks for the set, which is a steal. I really got to thank the guy who sold them to me and I feel really bad that he probably didn't get more money out of them because these are expensive pickups. I mean, they're DeMarzios for crying out loud, and I got the set for 80 bucks. That being said, we have three-way switch, one volume knob with a push-pull for the neck, great cleans, and then switch it right into the dirty bridge pickup. Love it. And then I plugged up the original placement of the bridge pickup with this little plastic plug here and I just moved it back because when I'm playing I like to have the volume out of the way and I don't really use it that much. I may only ever have my guitars either all the way on or all the way off. So sorry my cat's calling me I don't know if that picks up on camera. But this guitar is absolutely fantastic and this is my seven string. And at the end of the extended range category we have this 
crazy freaking Ibanez 8-string S-series, super paper thin for an 8-string, and this guitar is pretty freaking wild. So first and foremost, I started off my sort of experimentation into extended range with a Harley Benton 8-string. I got an 8-string before I even tried a 7-string, just because when it came to tuning, I already had a guitar that did drop A stuff, that was the House of Blues guitar, and I really wanted to try drop E because it just seemed like an interesting take on standard tuning so that I could still play, you know, guitar chords or just um, power chords rather in, you know, the same position and have it be the same note and just sort of open up like a world of different voicings. And that guitar was great for the money I think I paid like 150 bucks, including shipping to the United States, which for an eight string, that's really good. And that guitar was great quality, crappy pickups, sounded really muddy, really dull, but really opened my eyes to the eight string world. And so when I saw this on Guitar Center used for like 250 bucks, 200 bucks, I had to really jump on the opportunity because I mean, this thing is absolutely cool. In terms of specs, first and foremost, we have some wheel weights, quite a bunch of wheel weights on the back here because while I love the S uh, series style body with the super paper thin, with an eight string, it doesn't make a ton of sense because you have so much more wood and so many extra tuners up here. You get a lot of neck dye. You get a lot of neck dye. So to counter that, I put the wheel weights on and it really helped and it was just like a very sort of functional thing to do that made this playable standing up because otherwise you're fighting it so hard and you're gonna give yourself CTS, it's whatever. But moving on to the pickups, we have EMG 808s. These are very sort of standard for like, not entry eight strings by any stretch of the imagination, but like, sort of like bridging the gap into like more expensive eight strings, so like Schecter's, mid-range Ibanez's all have 808s or sort of very similar 8-string EMGs and they're known for being a little dull, a little bit muddy in the low end. Cats, sorry. A little bit dull and muddy in the low end so I put in the 18 volt mod, or not the 18 volt mod, the 24 volt mod that you can buy online is like 10, 15, 20 bucks for one of these things including the batteries and it really opened up the low end. You don't get as much preamp clipping when you're uh, recording, and it just makes everything sound a lot more open and a lot clearer when you're playing. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty basic. We just have the volume and the three-way selector switch and the two pickups and this awesome recess jack that I love so much. And this is my epic, genty, brutal, disgusting, heavy metal eight string. And last, but certainly not least for now, we have this guitar, which is actually one of my current favorite guitars, which has actually inspired a custom guitar build that I commissioned from 10S Guitars. If you guys have heard of that company, check them out. They're really cool guys and really awesome custom shop with really awesome quality, and I'm really excited to get that guitar. That being said, this is an NK headless guitar. This is a Chinese company, NK is a Chinese company, and they produce these very, very cool headless guitars for like, I think I got mine used for about $250. I think they go new for about $350, $300, $350, up to like $500. It's surprisingly good for the money. I mean, headless guitars are kind of a polarizing thing to look at. I mean, of course, this is like, Where's the head? How do you how do you work it? But most of the companies that do headless guitars, like Strandberg, Kiesel, uh, those are the ones that come to mind first and foremost. Uh, their custom shop guitars are incredibly expensive, and even their sort of standard production run guitars, I think the lowest priced Strandberg that they have on their website right now, is like fifteen hundred, not fifteen hundred, yeah, fifteen hundred dollars, which is pretty steep for a guitar and. I wanted to just find a way to save some money, so I picked this thing up and 
it was definitely worth the investment, especially for somebody who's trying out a headless guitar for the very first time. This thing is really freaking cool. So, first and foremost, with this guitar, you get this awesome sort of uh, burled uh, maple veneer. This is definitely not a real top. This is just a veneer because you wouldn't be able to get a $300 guitar with this kind of actual maple top. That would be absurd. But very cool blue color. And then the back is this natural wood. The neck is flamed maple. I don't know if that's real flamed maple or if it's just some sort of clever overlay that they've done. If it's like printed on or something like that. I don't know. I couldn't tell you, but it looks like real flame as far as I know, and it's just really cool. You also have these glow-in-the-dark side dots. They're not lumen lays. I'm assuming they're something generic. Yeah, this thing is specced out like crazy. In addition, you have these pickups, which are not stock. They come stock with like Artec rail humbuckers, which are very sort of you know, geared towards metal and not very versatile and just very oversaturated. So I swapped those out for a Seymour Duncan Omega and a Seymour Duncan Screaming Demon, George Lynch, something like that. Uh, in the neck, it's typically a bridge pickup, but the Omega is a lot hotter, so it made sense to try it out in the bridge just to see how that would sound. It sounds really good. Then coil tap, coil split, coil split, tone knob, three-way switch, and this bridge, you have to use this little turning peg, stick it in there, and turn the, uh, the little knobs or the strings. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but for $300, what can you really expect? But that being said, once I get my 10S custom headless guitar, this is probably going to leave me. Um, just because, you know, I really do like this guitar, but I think the 10S is gonna really blow this one away, so it's gonna suffer by comparison. So, we'll see, but for now, this is the final part of my collection. So there you have it, guys. That's all my guitars. I have a couple more bass guitars, but they're very sort of generic, and there isn't really much to talk about with those. So I left them out of this video for the sake of runtime. I think this is probably gonna be a pretty long video, so, Sorry about that, I'm gonna try and edit it as much as I can in post, but I hope you've enjoyed this very different sort of feel for my channel, this very different sort of video topic, and I hope you've enjoyed just in general as a whole. Um, if you wanna see more guitar related content, feel free to let me know in the comments down below, or if you think I should just go back to my normal hair routine type stuff, let me know as well. Or if I should just quit YouTube altogether, let me know. Uh, I, I like to know these things, you know, you know, quit while I'm behind type of deal. But in any case, that's today's video. I hope you've enjoyed. Feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, have a wonderful day. Peace.